Hello and welcome back to AR-77, Airgun Replicas 77. First things first, it has been way too long. So I must send out all my thanks and appreciation to all the uh, all the long-standing uh, subscribers and viewers of the channel. Thanks for sticking with. Uh, thanks for your shout outs and mentions in the comments. It's good to see actually that you're all sort of chatting with each other in the comments section from time to time and, and passing on uh, knowledge and info and, and asking questions. That's That's really nice to see. You know what it's like. We're all working folk. We don't always have the expendable cash to uh, to fork out on lovely things like air guns and so on and so forth. Um, I run this as a hobby, not as a as a business. But I kind of I felt like there was a bit of an itch I needed to scratch, and I've managed to get myself a couple of new pistols. Uh, and I've had a few ideas as well of uh, of some future sort of sort of videos or, or content as they call it that I'd like to make. So I'm back. And hopefully I will be creating videos on a more regular basis uh, from here on in. Like I say, it's a hobby. It's not a professional sort of venture, this. Um, so I mean, hence the, the production values, which are obviously quite quite amateurish. But that's OK. That's OK. That's not what we're here for. We're not here to see a, a Michael Bay film. We're here to look at air guns. So that's, that's OK. Um, <laughs> that said... Uh, I do very much appreciate subscribers. I appreciate you sharing the content around YouTube and, and with each other uh, just to get the word out. And we'll try and get a few more few more subscribers to the channel. Um, and I do always, perhaps more than any of that, appreciate you getting in touch and your comments. I do try and get back to them when I see them popping up. Um, some th things are, are kind of like regularly asked questions and it's uh, it's tricky because I go, I kind, of, I kind of answered that already, uh, but I'm aware that there's a lot of, well, there's a few, <laughs> not not as many as I would like, uh, new subscribers. So, yeah, I'll keep an eye on the comments box and um, or the comments section, if you will, uh, and uh, and try and get back to as many as I can. Um, but I do enjoy kind of engaging with you all. And, uh, yeah, more of that to come. So let's look at the gun that's on the table in front of us today. This is the Springfield Armoury XDE 45. This is by Air Venturi. Um, they are also responsible for the Springfield XDM. Uh, so I guess they've got the rights to some of Springfield's uh, pistols. Um, it's an interesting one, this. Uh, it's one that I overlooked for a time, uh, I think, because I wasn't keen on the way it, it looked, I guess. I was just a bit like, OK, what's that? What's that trying to be? Um, <laughs> in terms of the gun itself, as in the real steel, um, I think, again, this was a bit of a, an anomaly. Uh, this was a single stack, uh, but single action, double action pistol, um, which I think was a bit of a novelty. You can tell me, those of you with uh, with real firearms knowledge, um, and it was a kind of a, what what are we trying to solve with this gun? I think that was the kind of the... The issue it was kind of well it's quite it's quite narrow with the single stack but it's actually quite a big gun as well certainly in the in the full size like this um why would you want both in this day and age some people probably thought i don't know maybe it was some people who just preferred the the single double action option um but i think it's discontinued now so again a good a good opportunity for us kind of replica collectors to get a hold of something that is discontinued in the real world. And if you liked the look of this this pistol in its in its real world uh, version, then the air pistol is probably a good place to go if you if you're struggling to get a hold of one because you get to feel it, you get to shoot it. Uh, apparently, it's a realistic weight. Uh, I'll put the um, the specs up just sort of here for you so you can see all the technical uh, elements to it. Uh, and it does feel, just feel like a chunky, a chunky gun. And perhaps, as I'll come to, a bit of a what I might call a marmite gun. I think you might love it or hate it. Um, having said that, I've got my own opinions on it, which I'll share with you. But in no way are they uh, expert opinions. Again, I'm an enthusiast, not an expert. Uh, but hopefully, this will inform you if you do look at buying one of these, uh, one of these guns. So this actually. In some ways, it's kind of reminiscent of a few other guns. It's got quite a high bore axis there at the rear. If we look at, uh, what else have we got on the table? If we look at my SIG SP2022, you've got quite a high bore axis at, at the rear there. The uh, the slide sits quite high up there, uh, above above where you sort of your hand uh, grips the pistol. So it's a bit a bit 
sig-like. I'm taking a few sort of liberties here. It's a bit sig-like at the back. On the top, uh, it's very much, if I get my Glock, uh, this is the 19 Gen 3. It's quite similar to the Glock at the top as well. It's got a, a kind of a, a flat uh, top to the slide, which is very, very reminiscent of the Glock, if I can get this to give me any kind of focus. Yeah, very flat at the top. Um, it's not, Glocks aren't the only guns that have a flat slide. The, uh, this is the MP. Again, that's got a flat slide at the top there, but it, the angling is kind of, it comes around a bit more there at the side, whereas there's more, more of a 90 degree kind of cut. Um, obviously it's a bit rounded, but it's more of a 90 degree cut on the, uh, on the XDE and the, uh, and the Glock. Um, let's bring it, well, I might, might call it its big brother out to the table. Uh, that's the uh, Springfield XDM. Um, and you can see, I mean, these are very, very different guns, really. This is, well, I want to say fully functioning, but they're both in a way fully functioning. Um, this has got a far more aggressive kind of tactical look to it. It's, it's a far more kind of... I don't know what you'd call it. It, it. Aggressive, I think. I think I found the right word first time out of the bag. Um, yeah, it's it's similar in some ways. Some of the um, kind of fixtures and fittings look look quite similar. And it's got a lot of the same features. You can see the 4.5 there is marked. Yeah, the 4.5 there and all the branding and stuff from uh, from Springfield. But you can tell that this is kind of tactical with these grips and these serrations and stuff but more of what you might call a kind of a smoothed off or refined kind of look understated let's call it an understated profile to the pistol so we'll get him off the table and we'll revisit the xdm a little bit later on i'm sure i do like to compare guns kind of like for like and it's the details for me it's the devil is in the details i like picking out things that uh that guns share in common and where they differ and where we might think, okay, I wonder if that's been inspired by that styling or whatever. Anyway, I'm rambling. You can see it's been ages since I've spoken to anyone, can't you? Uh, so it's all coming out now. Right, let's do a walk around of the Springfield Armoury XDE 4.5. So 4.5 means it is the full length. Uh, I think in the real steel, there was obviously a compact version of this. This is the full size, full weight version of the pistol. Um, so it is, as I said before, it's quite a slim pistol, uh, more like the sort of, I guess, with it being single stack, I guess it's more like a sort of a, a 1911 width. I wasn't going to do a video without mentioning a 1911, was I? Um, yeah, so it's quite a slim, slim looking pistol, uh, quite flat. Uh, if you think again of the uh, XDM, if I show you the XDM, you can see the slide has a kind of a, it's angled, it's like kind of tapered, it's more narrow at the top than it is at the side and it gives it a bit of a bit of width there. Um, if we look at the XDE, it's just flat, which is why it reminds me of the old, uh, let's bring him out, the old slab sides 1911, very flat kind of profile to the pistol there, very flat, that's the Remington. For your pleasure, um, what else can I tell you in this? Okay, it feels heavy. It feels like a big, heavy gun. On the box, it says, you know, realistic weight. Um, again, this, I, I put the stats back up so you can have a look at the weight because I can't remember off the top of my head. But it certainly feels like a big, solid chunky gun and that's a nice thing i think for us replica collectors it's nice to have something that doesn't feel cheap doesn't feel toy like and i think this uh, this falls into the category of what you might call a solidly built air pistol i quite like it um the, the grip kind of helps with that a little bit because it's quite a kind of from the side it's quite a broad grip it's narrow here but it's broad sort of front to back um so it's a lot to kind of get your hand around. I'm not sure if I, I like it too much. I'm not sure if it's my my favourite. Um, if you look at like a 1911, once again, we've got, it's quite, uh, you know, it's not that 
wide here to there. And although it's a narrow gun, it, f it flares a little bit on the uh, because of the grips. So your hand comes nicely around it. You see how my my kind of thumb touches my my middle finger there. Your hand comes nicely around it. Um, this one, it's <laughs> well, it does exactly the same. Of course, it does because I'm because I'm demonstrating it, making me making me look like a liar. Uh, but it feels like I'm stretching. It feels like my finger's got further to go. It's still comfortable enough. I can still shoot it quite well, actually. Um, but it feels feels like a larger grip, uh, and I don't mind that. You know, I, I just I think I prefer. And again, this is a personal opinion. Even on a larger handgun uh, like the PT ninety two or sort of breath style guns, even on a larger gun, I still I prefer a more rounded grip. I think than a flat sort of deep grip. I'd rather have a more rounded grip. Uh, and you do get that on the XDM. Uh, again, you can see it's it's kind of it doesn't look much different. This is broader, but it feels more comfortable to get your hand around there, and your finger is is not having to stretch just as far forward. So if you've got tiny tiny hands, you might struggle. But I think I think you'll be all right. My hands aren't enormous; I'd say they're kind of medium size, and I can get onto that quite comfortably. Um, so that's one thing. But I've digressed again. Um, I was just talking about the weight, and it feels like there's a lot of metal in this pistol, a lot of metal work perhaps going on internally. The magazine, as I'll show you later, does add uh, some significant weight. It's a metal slide. Uh, it's polymer or plastic sort of lower frame. I think these fixtures and fittings are, are plastic, uh, although it doesn't really detract um, as, along with the mag release. You, the trigger and the hammer are, are metal. Uh, and the slide, as I said, is metal. So let's go front to back. Let's do a proper walk round like, uh, like we know what we're doing, shall we? Here at the front of the gun, we've got a nice recessed barrel that sits nicely back in there. So it doesn't look like a kind of a, a, a toy gun, if you will. It looks a little bit more realistic for the replica collector. Uh, we've got a nice fiber optic front sight, similar to what we have on the XDM similar to what we have on the CZ75 SP01 Shadow, which I don't happen to have on the table, but I have done a review on that. So that's that's a nice touch. Um, we've got these front slide serrations. They're, they're pretty decent. They give you a nice, nice amount of grip. Uh, if you uh, if you want to use those, pretend you're doing a slide check or whatever you want to do with that, or maybe you rack it from the front. Uh, that's entirely up to you. We've got a nice XDE etched kind of logo, tastefully done um, with the 4.5 that I mentioned before. Uh, we've also got that nice, on the top of the slide, that nice kind of Springfield Armoury uh, logo there, which I really like. I really like that. It's a nice touch, uh, which probably helps stop the sun reflecting and glaring into your eyes as well so that's a double bonus they've got one of those on the um on the xdm as well as you can see you can see which gun's been used a bit more um but yeah i do like that i do like that little detail on the top of the gun there um what else oh yeah on the top of the slide we've got the um loaded chamber indicator here this is obviously uh, non-functioning on this particular gun this is just a air gun so we don't Really, that doesn't get used. Uh, some air guns do. They have a, a function for telling you that it's loaded, but in this case, that doesn't uh, that doesn't work. Uh, and we've got these again, these serrations at the rear, which are good, nice to get hold of. If I just take the magazine out like that, they're uh, nice to get hold of and wrap the slide with. Um, yeah, fully fully fit for purpose, I would say. Uh, the other side, we've got more kind of tastefully tastefully uh, etched um, markings including you've got springfield armory here usa um caliber information actual caliber information there on the uh, on the on the port there which is which is cut out what's that called is that called a dust cover or something please let me know i'll have to do a bit of research but i'm i'm guessing one of you can be quicker uh, in leaving a comment that tells me what that's called um, and you've got your extractor there again, which is non non functioning, but it's nice that it's there. It's nice that it's cut out and it's there on the slide. Uh, everything in its right place. 
Uh, we've got white dot sights at the rear, which are really nice. They give a very good sight picture along with... Oh, he picks the red one to demonstrate this. Uh, they give you a really nice sight picture along with that kind of fiber optic at the front there. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, there's, they've not kind of skimped on, on things like that. I get frustrated when you get a gun that should have white dots or something like that and they don't have it on. It just seems seems like a, a cost saving exercise really um and there's also nice detail on the hammer when you um, when you pull the hammer back you see that it has that xde marking which is completely pointless but uh, it's a nice touch it's nice to have it there while we're on the hammer um i think the actual xde i think the hammer is kind of placed differently i think it's got a different pivot spot or something whatever you want to call it you see here when you when i bring that back you can see that it's kind of it's in there on the actual xde the real the nine like the nine millimeter when you cock that hammer the hammer protrudes far further so it feels like it's a longer kind of arm on it if you will and it feels like it's kind of pivoted from somewhere around here i don't know if that's the case but from what i've seen this looks like it's kind of further into the gun than it is on the real steel i'll see if i can find a, a photo of that and put it here just for just for just for giggles i suppose so let's have a look at the lower frame before we get into all the fixtures and fittings again nice bit of kind of design from the top down to the lower this kind of swooping line here just brings the top and the bottom of the gun uh, together nicely if that's the sort of thing that that turns you on and then we have here SI Geneseo IL, uh, which is Springfield Incorporated, Geneseo, Illinois, which is the home of uh, Springfield Incorporated, or as far as I'm aware, uh, it's where this, this, the home of this gun is. Uh, again, you can tell me, you can tell me uh, the truth of that in the comments. Uh, slightly in uh, contradiction to what's written beneath it, made in Taiwan, which I figure <laughs> uh, responds more to the air pistol itself. Um, on the other side, you've got the F there for the German market. Don't know what this S is. Don't know what that S means. So once again, I'm reliant on your information. I'll show you the gun and you tell me everything about it. How's that for a relationship? Um, what have we got? OK, so in terms of fixtures and fittings, we've got this thumb safety here, um, which is quite nice. It goes up and down with a nice kind of assuring, reassuring click. And it's nice to have a little red mark there letting you know that that is not safe and that is safe. Also, it's quite nice that it's ambidextrous. Uh, so that works perfectly well from either side. You've got your slide stop or slide release there which does kind of work, but the real steel would, the slide would come back a bit further than that. Uh, it would probably hook into there. Um, so it does work and it will lock back after your final shot, but uh, the uh, the movement range on the slide is not what you would expect from the real steel. Um, so still, still better to have a bit of blowback and a bit of movement in my opinion, but I would have preferred it if that was the full uh, range of, of motion. And then you have your takedown or disassembly lever there, um, which I think I showed you before, but just for uh, belt and braces, I'll show you on the XDM. Very similar kind of style to those pieces there. Um, it's inconsequential, I suppose, but just a feature that I wanted to point out. Then you have the um, kind of cutaway here, this little bit here. That is on the real on the real firearm. You would wrap the slide back so that that was in line with the takedown lever, and then that would allow you to move the takedown lever and bring the slide off, um, as it does actually on the XDM. Let me show you that. Um, so on the XDM, let me take the mag out of there. I'm going to make a balls up of this. I know it. It's been ages. Okay, so you slide that back and you line it up there, and then once that's up there, the slide comes off. Didn't make a balls up of it. Let me get back back on. Uh, oh, look at that. Like riding a bike. Beautiful. Do like that. 
Um, but that's not the case. <laughs> Sorry to uh, burst that particular bubble. That's not the case here because obviously, as I said, the slide doesn't come back just that far. But nevertheless, it's, it's still got the uh, the mark there, which is which is good. I like that level of detail. And then you've got your accessory rail at the front here. Put a little torch or a laser or whatever you want to put on there. Um, the pins are all in the kind of correct places, how they'd be on the actual uh, actual real steel as well. So I always think that's quite a nice uh, a nice touch. The mag release. Let me put this magazine back in here. Um, again, spring loaded, which is a nice touch, and fully ambidextrous there as well. So again, uh, ambidextrous safety, ambidextrous mag release. I think that's quite good. I like that sort of stuff. Um, I'm right-handed, but it means that if you are left-handed, those important elements like your, your mag release and your safety are accessible uh, to you. So again, nice attention to detail. Uh, one final detail, I suppose, on the on the sort of lower bit of the frame is a nice bit of uh, finger groovage there on the front of the otherwise a quite a relatively smooth uh, trigger guard. As we move down to the grip, then again, there's that size thing. I don't know if it's maybe just me splitting hairs. It just feels like a funny shape. I mean, you've got your thumb rest there and everything. Like I say, I can access the trigger. It just feels a bit of a, a weird shape, but... It has grown on me uh, since shooting the pistol. I have got used to it, how, how it feels, and uh, I'm better at shooting at it, getting get better accuracy, actually, which probably means I'll be crap at shooting all the rest of my guns. But hey-ho, that's, uh, that's not much of a price to pay, I suppose. Just means more practice with the rest. Um, we've got more XDE branding uh, here on the, on the grip, and that's both sides. Fairly decent plastic uh, on this, on the kind of the lower frame. Um, and quite a nice little grip pattern. Again, it feels like a kind of grip, grip tape. It's not particularly aggressive, but your hand isn't going anywhere when it's on that, that grip. And the mag plate here, fine. That's okay. It's nice that there is a mag plate on the bottom of there, so you can't see all the sort of the workings of the magazine. But I think if I put a picture up again for you just here, knock, knock my camera out of the way, I think it's a bit deeper on the air gun version than it is on the real steel or real polymer, as I perhaps should say, uh, XDE. But again, not by very much. And it's a small price to pay just to have that uh, that covered mag. Um, as for the magazine, once again, it is spring loaded and I quite like that. It is nice and heavy. There's some real, real weight to that um, on the box. It says that the magazine holds 18 rounds, but in my experience, you can comfortably fit 20 rounds into these magazines without any jams or anything going wrong. So you've really got uh, a 20 round, a 20 round magazine there. It takes 4.5 millimeter steel BBs. Put the gun down. You just um, pull the follower back, and fortunately, it does lock back into place there. And you load your BBs in from the top. Really straightforward, very similar to the magazine on the uh, uh, Smith & Wesson, the M&P here. Again, similar sort of thing. You've got your covered base plate there. Uh, you can see very similar, very similar design to the magazines. Uh, you load it in from the top there. Um, let me put this one back out of the way. Um, these magazines, a bit of a double-edged sword, really. Uh, it's good, that it, you know, it holds the ammunition and the CO2. So if you've got a couple of magazines, you're going to be out there for far longer because while one CO2 is recovering, you're loading the other mag in and, you know, you, you can you can be out there for quite some time. Um, you're going to have to reload both of them, obviously. Um, but it's good. It's nice. I like, like the fact that everything is in the magazine there. Um, the, fl the base plate is a bit, little bit flimsy, um, but I've not had an issue with it. It works quite well. You just unscrew that with the uh, provided kind of Allen key or hex key or whatever you want to call that. Um, pop your CO2 in. You can see the valve just there. Pierce the, uh, pierce the CO2. No hisses. Uh, well, slight hiss just when I sort of breach the CO2, but then it locks up nice and tight and there's no noise, nothing being released. Um, so, you know, the magazine works, that's that's fine. 
but I'll perhaps uh, I'll perhaps tell you why I'm I'm less keen on this method as I am on other methods a bit later on in the video when we do some uh, some pros and cons. Okay, so let me bring the pistol back in here. Nice, nice little uh, crunch there when the mag goes in, and it does again add some significant weight to the pistol. Now this is a single action, double action pistol, as I said before, so you can fire it double action by just pulling the trigger and that will do all of the work for you. Or you can put this pistol into what is called single action, where you just pull the trigger back and it takes up a lot of that kind of, uh, ah, what's the word, travel, let's say, it takes up a lot of that and you can pull the trigger that way. Obviously, because it's blowback, every time you pull the trigger and it blows back it's ready to shoot again okay um the double action pull is significantly harder um more so even when it's gassed and when it's got ammunition in it because it's doing everything the 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 single action is a lot better so the double action you've got all this sort of creepage here all this travel and then it's kind of you just keep the pressure on keep the pressure on keep the pressure on and it does eventually go sometimes uh, when you first start shooting a gun it's a bit of a surprise so you've just got to keep it keep it aimed in the right direction just keep going let it travel let it go 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 and then it'll go um when you come to the single action you have to be careful because uh, well, first of all, let me show you this. If we're in single action, you get there and you've got a nice clear wall. Really, really easy to get it to there without the trigger, without it breaking, without the uh, the hammer kind of breaking. Get it there and then just a few more bits of pressure and it goes. When it does that, this is one of the bugbears about this sort of magazine system. When you're sort of... I don't know, mucking about with the gun when it's not loaded, when you first get it and you get it out of the box and you just want to see how it feels. You might be thinking, okay, so there, there it breaks and where's my reset? And you let it off and you think, well, there's my reset. And that's great because, yeah, it does, it does reset and it does um, engage the hammer again. But actually, because of the mechanism inside the magazine and inside this gun, when you get it to that first reset here, all you're doing is resetting the CO2, essentially. So if you pull the trigger again there, you'll shoot some CO2 out of the gun, but you won't be releasing any ball bearings, okay? So when you shoot it like that, okay, I'll just do this again. You have to let it reset. There's your CO2, but then you have to let it go all the way to the front again so that when you pull the trigger, you are shooting an actual projectile and not just a bit of gas downrange. Hope that's clear uh, and that's pretty much the same on all of those sorts of guns. The M&P uh, BB version, the uh, well says that the HK VP9, the Glock uh, 19X, all very very similar in that regard. And I will say that the the in the action generally does get better with use. The more I've fired this gun, the easier it's got to shoot, the easier it has become to shoot, even uh, in double action. So that's something to bear in mind. Don't panic straight out of the box. Make sure you're using your silicon oil and getting the bits lubed up that you can, um, you know, including things like the slide and stuff like that. And over time, as you get used to using the gun, it will get easier to use and you should get better at shooting it. Now, it's not full blowback, as I said before, but it's nice to have uh, some blowback. And I will say that on this particular pistol, the uh, the XDE 4.5, it's nice, snappy blowback. And along with the weight uh, and quite a, quite a pop when you shoot it, there's some noise that comes out of it. It does feel, feel in sort of speech marks or finger marks, whatever you want to call those things. It feels like a powerful air gun. So there's a lot of sort of pleasure to shooting it uh, from that regard. In, term, in terms of real power, the box says, I think, 380 you know, feet, feet per second. It's probably a bit lower than that. Again, that's not my sort of forte. I don't crony all my guns. Um, but it's, it's enough for plinking. It's enough to be accurate enough for plinking. Uh, and it's enough to, uh, 
yeah, give you that pop, give you that blowback, and make you feel like you can enjoy not just owning a replica, but shooting a replica, a replica at the same time. Uh, this is going to be difficult if I can't say the word replica. <laughs> okay, so last thing, I suppose, before we move on to sort of pros and cons, you can take this gun down, uh, and it's quite quite straightforward. I showed you the uh, takedown lever, as I showed you on the XDM as well, but it works in a kind of a slightly different way um, to to the XDM and the real steel. This this would be a sort of pivot point here uh, in reality, but on this gun, that is the opposite way around, okay? So you flip it forward. If you get here and you kind of start trying to do this and you think, it doesn't work, it's because you have to do it from the rear. So you flip that forward, and then it's as easy as bringing the slide back, up, and off, okay? And then you've got your your slide with not very much going on there, a seal there, um, but not very much going on in the top of the pistol. Most of what happens, happens really, I suppose, in the, uh, in the magazine, that mechanism at the top of the magazine, which kind of pushes your BB out as, uh, as gas is released through there, through the valve. Uh, and you've got your fixed um, barrel there, uh, but you can get in there for your rails or whatever, and do a bit of lubrication as you see fit. And then it's dead easy. You've got your guide rod here and your spring. You can, it's dead easy just to line everything up, <laughs> he says, and just pull it up and back over. Put that back in place and you're good to go. Yeah, couldn't be more straightforward. So a really nice, easy gun to strip like that uh, and take down and have a look at. OK, so. Pros and cons of the XDE 4.5 by Air Venturi. I wish the mechanics were in the gun um, and not in the magazine. It, it makes for a, a far better, easier single action trigger pull, uh, which is which is kind of the point of having a single action, isn't it? If you've got a single action, even if it's single or double, uh, you want that single action to be far easier. Uh, and more straightforward, a true single action pull. Uh, like on the, like look at the um, this is the Taurus PT-92 by KWC. It looks like uh, there's a there's a Crossman version and Swiss Arms version. But they're all pretty much pretty much the same gun. So you've got the double action here, which this I mean this gun's really smooth. It's full metal. That's <laughs> that's not even hard to do anyway. But when you see, when you engage the single action, you can see that trigger go back and you can see that it's, oh, it's like butter. Yeah, it, it's so much more straightforward. It's All it's doing is that single action of releasing the hammer and nothing else, which is why you get a more credible looking, authentic looking magazine also. Um, so... There is that. That's one of my kind of bugbears with the XDE, along with the M&P and the VP9 and the 19X and a whole host of different letters and numbers when it comes to naming guns. But that's OK. That's OK. I can overlook it. It's just one bugbear. Um, the base plate, yeah, it's a little bit thicker than the real steel, but that's nothing to write home about, really. Um, the hammer position, yeah, when it's when it's cocked. It's in a slightly different position to what it is on the real steel. But again, I'm, I'm really splitting hairs in mentioning that. Um, it's not super accurate, but it has, you know, if you take your time with your shot placement, if you take time to get a proper sight picture, you can get better and better and better results. Um, it remains to be seen how how accurately I can I can begin to shoot this gun. But as I said before, it's more than accurate enough to shoot cans in the garden or toy soldiers or whatever. You just, you know, up to a few metres, um, you're you're going to have a lot of fun with this gun. It's not designed, again, to be a, a target pistol. It's a back garden plinker. Um, that, that trigger pull is a bit of an issue, especially the single action. Uh, sorry, the double action. Uh, it, it's, it is quite a... Ball ache. Um but yeah, the single action is um, is a lot better, a lot easier to use, 
Uh, and as I said, it got easier the more I shot it in my sort of trials. In terms of positives, it's a really nice weight. Um, I don't know if it's the exact authentic weight of the XDE, but it certainly feels the part. And like I say, for, for us kind of air gun collectors, that feel is quite an important thing a lot of the time. It feels like you've got a hefty gun in your hand. Um, you feel like you've got your money's worth. You know, you feel like in terms of metal work uh, and whatever else, engineering, you feel like you've got your money's worth from this gun. I like the fact that it's kind of tastefully marked, um, these kind of etched, there's none of that white writing. The only thing I didn't mention is there's a little bit of grey writing. It looks brighter on this video than it is in reality, actually. Uh, but it's again, it's tastefully done under the uh, the trigger guard. But that's that's all, you know, you can see each side, it's all nicely tastefully done. Again, that doesn't jump out massively. Uh, and you've got these nice white, white, uh, that's not white, that's red. These nice red dots for the uh, for the safety. So the markings of the gun, uh, I'm I'm quite pleased with that. Ultimately, this is a this is a full sized gun of a really good weight, and it's got a ton of features. Okay, it's field strippable, it's single action, double action. All the catches work. Uh, it's got ambidextrous safety. It's got an ambidextrous mag release. It's got great sights with the white dots at the back and the fiber optic at the front. It's got all those, you know, um, authentic Springfield kind of etched markings across the gun. Nice little touches of detail, like that XDM just there on the hammer, which you forget about, really. And then you notice it and you go, oh, yeah, that was a, that was a nice touch. Um, it's solid. You know, it's not, it's not a rattly gun. If I compare that once again to... The old Rattler, the uh, Smith & Wesson. That's that's not a nice noise. I don't I don't like that noise. I mean, it's, it's not as bad today as it has been. <laughs> but there's far less on the XDM, uh, XDE. Sorry, it's not it's not the sexiest looking gun. It's not the sexiest profile of a gun, but. <laughs> I do, I'm warming to it more and more. It's like a song that you hear, it's like an album track that you go, oh yeah, I'm gonna skip that one, go straight to the singles. And then after a while you go, do you know what, actually, that's growing on me and it's it continues to grow on me. I quite like it. Because all of that, all of that functionality, all those features and all those little, little details, in the UK, you get that for about 120 quid. And that's that's quite good, that's quite a lot for your money. Especially if you compare it to like the Glock 19, um, which does nothing really apart from shoot. It shoots hard and it shoots accurately, but that's about 100 quid. And it doesn't, you know, the, even the slide doesn't move, nothing, nothing, none of the gauges work or anything like that. It's got a stick magazine. This is at least has got a full size magazine of, of a sort. So as I said at the start, it's a bit of a Marmite gun. It's got more going on than the Glock but it's not as good looking as the Smith & Wesson or the Glock. Uh, and it doesn't have the kind of aggressive appeal of the XDM. So I don't know, I, I like it and it's growing more on me, but do feel free to get in touch via the comments section and let me know what you think of the Air Venture Springfield Armoury XDE 4.5. Have a look at one, pick one up, shoot one if you get the opportunity uh, and tell me what you think. As always, Thanks for watching. Uh, I do want to send out my thanks once again for those of you who stuck with the channel. There will be more content coming soon. And as I always like to say at the end of the video, please do stay safe. Take care. All the very best to you all. Bye.